Hello, it is Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is a Saturday puzzle, very possibly the toughest puzzle of the week. And to the extent that this is possible at all, I'm going to try and do this video fairly quickly because I have to immediately solve the Boss Words Fall Themeless League competition puzzle number three for Patreon subscribers, which I have not had any time this week to uh, solve, at least not on a video. So a bit behind, so I'm going to try and do this quickly, but we'll see. We'll see if Sam Azerski uh, allows me to do so. First, I will quickly mention the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve if you would like to help support this channel. And if you're in the benefactor tier or above, the as I've mentioned a few times this week, the voting on which design you'd prefer for your exclusive mug is underway. And since I've been mentioning it and driving people to the poll, the let's check the crosses design has pulled out with a convincing lead. So if you feel differently and you'd like to change that result, you better get over there. Okay, um, won't mention anything else about the Patreon for now, other than that there are plenty of bonus videos if you're interested in becoming a patron and checking those out. So let's move on to some comments from yesterday's puzzle about some things that I got wrong. <laughs> um, Eric Ratamero uh, says, confusingly, Uranus is the only planet in the solar system that is named after a Greek, not Roman, god. Uranus is the god of the sky. It's one of the primordi primordial deities like Chaos or Gaia. Its Roman counterpart is Kalos. So yes, I because Uranus is the name of a planet, I assumed it was the name of a Roman god, which is typical, as Jason Hogan also points out. Uh, usually planets use the Roman name, but Uranus is an exception. And then gives some examples that I think many of us no, like Jupiter corresponds with Zeus, Mars corresponds with Aries, and Saturn corresponds with Cronus. So there we go. And then also, speaking of the classical world, Halcyon writes in to point out centurions are called such because they lead a hundred, a century, not because there were a hundred of them. This is quite irritating for me because I am quite certain I knew that and yet blatantly either misremembered or misstated it on the video yesterday. There must be some, I must have some sort of light masochistic tendency that uh, I can't I th can't think of why else someone would <laughs> commit to video every single day the opportunity to uh, get a bunch of facts wrong on the internet. It's quite astonishing. And yet that seems to be <laughs> the bed uh, I've made for myself. So I'm going to keep lying in it, I suppose, for your entertainment. Mitchell Turek points out that Tuesday and Friday were also named after Norse deities. Lots of deities going on here. Tyr and Frigga, respectively, for Tuesday and Friday. And that is in reference to one of the clues. Um, I actually don't, I think it was maybe, I actually don't, it was Thursday, I suppose, which is Thor's day. And then I'd also mentioned that Wednesday was Odin's uh, day. So there was some more context there. Not necessarily something I got wrong, just some interesting extra context. And here's something I just, I didn't know, and now I do. Chris Lavornia says, the kitty, and this refers to a, a clever sort of punny wordplay laced clue in which uh, poker chip was uh, brought up in reference to, to something dealing with kitty food. And Chris Lavornia says, indeed, the kitty is the antipot, which was one of the things I guessed, but I wasn't sure. Learning poker terms, he adds, will be extremely useful for future solving. Certainly true. Uh, and um, I think that's it. So let's move on to today's puzzle, a Saturday puzzle, very possibly quite difficult. This was constructed by Sam Azerski, and I, I know Sam Azerski's name because he has come to some amount of notoriety as the steward of the spelling bee game, which is also uh, part of the New York Times Cross, or sorry, New York Times games division more broadly, which is obviously anchored by the crossword, but which has a number of other games. I'm actually not very interested in most of the New York Times games. Most of them are sort of, I don't know, little drawing pictures by connecting lines and things that I don't find quite as interesting. Um, I did get into the spelling bee for a while. I eventually sort of fell out of it. I think largely when I started doing this series and had to start spending a lot more time and effort on the crossword, it sort of took over 
whatever uh, mental and literal time budget I had for New York Times games. But people really do like Sam Mazursky's Spelling Bee. So uh, he's done a good job with it. And here he is constructing a crossword. I don't know if I've, I don't know how prolific a crossword constructor he is. I think he's saw, done at least a few before. Anyway, it is edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And it is a Saturday puzzle, so themeless, a themeless puzzle. Let's get going. Okay. All right, we have questions of surprise with a question mark itself, so some kind of pun or wordplay. Boy, with, with this being a pun or wordplay, I feel as though it can honestly be so many different things. It's not even worth taking guesses at quite yet. Sort of certain native of the Mideast. Um, this is probably a Middle Eastern country demonym. I could imagine if it had a question mark, it would maybe be sort of cutely referring to the mid east of the United States or something. But anyway, not sure yet. Like cranks. Could be rotated, maybe. Rotate a crank. I th That's a pretty wild guess. And the cranks has plenty of other meanings, such as a uh, sort of fraud or something, a fraudulent person. But let's look at this just in case. Standard Disney fare. Maybe a G rating? I don't know. G, which in the United States um, film rating system means general audiences, which is common for Disney films. I don't really know if that exactly fits the clue, so it's a bit speculative, but let's let's look. Duraflame product. I think Duraflame makes logs for camping stoves or maybe igniter fluid or something. I don't know. Igniter Possibly this would have to this would have to be different. Obviously, I, I actually don't really know. River with the second largest discharge volume in the New World after the Amazon. Hmm. I don't know, but that will be interesting to find out. BB uh, barbecue specialty. I don't know. Pour something. This will be Spanish. Don't actually know. First school to win 100 NCAA titles. Certainly don't know. I'm thinking rotated might be wrong. Knock on wood. So this is a, some, you know, for luck, you knock on wood to hopefully foster good luck. And baby to be, I don't know, it could be zygote or gamete or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe I should delete these. I feel as though I don't have enough confidence here. Let's keep looking. I'd like to get something that I can really slam dunk. Indian spice mixes. Maybe masalas, as in garam masala, for instance. Low quality paper could be a rag if used to describe a low quality newspaper, for instance, you'd call it a rag. Some vacation getaways. Could be aisles. Oops, you might vacation on an aisle, picturesque aisle. And cause of a decrease in the cost of gasoline. Cause of a decrease in the cost of gasoline. What makes the cost of gasoline or petrol decrease? An oil glut, I suppose, when producers are producing much more oil that can drive the cost down. Cry, in inepti cry of ineptitude. <laughs> it could be I stink, maybe, I don't know. And then face of the internet, I'm trying to get as much mileage out of this masala as an oil glut as possible because it does actually seem, it does seem like it's maybe correct. Face of the internet, emoticon. We don't see the word emoticon much anymore because of the increasing dominance of emojis. And people sometimes confuse emoticon and emoji, but they're pretty distinct things. An emoticon is when you, can I type these in here? Yeah, an emoticon is the type of face that's created with ordinary stock standard punctuation, like colon and a, and a parentheses, whereas emoji are the illustrated ones. Okay, online marketing giant with a primate in its logo. Oh, I don't know. Although it just occurred to me that a certain native of the Mideast is an Emirati, uh, resident of the United Arab Emirates. And bullish, is this something dealing with Taurus or Tor, word for bull? Um, not sure. Here we have blank Chinmoy, one-time Indian spiritual leader. Could it be Shri, possibly? Let's see. Likely MVP candidate. That oh, could be an all-star. And then 
when what's mixed with bismuth, lead, and cadmium to make serosafe? I <laughs> wouldn't have a clue if you asked me this out of the blue, but with these crosses, I'm going to guess tin. Is that actually, sorry, is that plausible? Let's see. Well, yeah, lead, so there, and cadmium, there are metals in there, so let's say tin. To fail badly could be to tank, so bullish, taurine, oh, taurine, is that like leonine for um, adjectival form of lion, I bet. And then here we have to fail badly right tank, I just said that. Okay, strenuous is, oh, I feel as though there are a couple different things. Let's check the crosses. Is this such a good idea? Do I dare? Maybe? Yeah. Where I-25 meets I-40. So these are United States interstate highways. The I stands for interstate, if that isn't something you're familiar with, if you're not from the United States. Um, I don't know, honestly, but in four letters with an abbreviation, could be the U.S. state of Nebraska. Does that work here? What's that over? No, I don't think so. Uh, this looks like what's that over dare, which is a little bit suspicious. Kind of a goofy uh, clue and answer, but I think that must be what that is. Um, what else could this be? Where I-25 meets I-40. I mean, it could be a state or a city. Let's see. Strenuous. I'm still not seeing that for some reason. And things on the head of some outlaws. Well, bounties would be the most obvious, but that doesn't fit for at least two reasons. Um, probably ends with an S though, doesn't it? I would think. And here we have one of the lesser Antilles. Um, so an island, I would think. Let's see, pass through DC. Uh, so here, this is a political clue. And actually, it's sort of a fun pairing with where I-25 meets I-40, because this is about roads, highways that pass through location. And then this says pass through a U.S. location. But in this case, I think it means enact. In other words, enact a law in the legislature of the United States, which, of course, is located in Washington, D.C. So let's see. Charge for some truckers. Oh, ah. Cabotage came up just to my mind, but I don't think that's would be accurately what you'd call this. That's a privilege, I think, a, a, a sort of um, thing that is allowed for truckers to be able to operate in a certain area as opposed to the charge. I'm not really sure. Drawing of the body without its skin from the French. Drawing of the body without its skin. Oh, so is this a term that re refers to anatomical drawings of sort of muscles, the sort of Vitruvian man type of thing, and it is a word borrowed from French? I assume that's what it is, but I don't know what that word is. So let's move on. Get to be earn or take. Uh, let's see. Online, right. I sort of forgot about this. Online marketing giant with a primate in its logo. Ah, MailChimp. Right. Okay. That makes sense. I don't really remember their logo, but I wouldn't at all be surprised if there were a primate in it, given that they are named MailChimp. And then what is this? Oh, New Mexico, where I-25 meets I-40. Right. When you see this sort of thing, with letters adjoining one another that seem very implausible, <laughs> I always like to focus on those because sometimes it means, it's sometimes it's a huge hint because very few things could possibly have that arrangement of letters. And sometimes it means you've done something wrong. And <laughs> one of the downward crosses is incorrect. But in this case, I was pretty confident about emoticon and MailChimp. All right. So strenuous is taxing. There we go. Okay. And get could be gain. One of the lesser Antilles. Oh, St. St. Nevis? Is that? I don't think so. St. Kitts is what I thought. I, I think St. Kitts, I think, is actually, I don't. I think St. Nevis, Nevis, I'm adding the saint, but St. Kitts is definitely an island. Oh, oh, I see. I was skeptical of it at first because I couldn't think how G and K would make a get, but I think this is grok, which <clears throat> that is a, grok means to sort of, oh, I, I get it. I understand it. I, that my brain is is able to process that correctly. And I think it comes from maybe Stranger in a Strange Land. Who wrote that? 
can't remember. It comes from a science fiction novel, the, and it's sort of entered idiomatic speech in English, I guess. Uh, idiomatic is the wrong word. Anyway, it's entered sort of casual speech. Tri-tip, tri-tip is a beef cut, and things on the head of some outlaws. Um, I don't really see what that is. I'm sorry. Charge for some truckers. Could it be? Oh, oh, a price on the head. So it is. It is a synonym for bounty in this case. And then I think this might be cartage, which would fit the, the, and then here we have drawing of the body without its skin from the French. I'm, yeah, I just, I think that's probably a word I either don't know or have encountered a few times, but, but rarely used. So it's not really in the forefront of my mind. A headliner um, could be some sort of act, a big act, a, a lead act maybe. What's the blank? I don't know. Sunblock blocks it. Could be UV light, ultra ultraviolet light. And then this could be perhaps a corche or a corche in French. Don't know. Some charges for animal lovers. Could be a fee. A charge is often a fee. And then uh, what's the diff this is? So we've got a few of these little slangy bits of language, like what's the diff and what's that over there? All right. What halophobia is the fear of? Halophobia or halophobia? I don't think I know that one. There's so many obscure phobias. Musical equivalent of two whole, no whole notes. Musical equivalent of two whole notes. Well, two whole notes are already musical, aren't they? Is this a brev or something? Headliner. I mean, that... That could be lead act, if that were the case. And to go from E to F could end in up. That would make this pet fees, which occurred to me earlier, but it seems much too straightforward. I mean, charges for animal lovers, pet fees. I mean, that feels as though it's just being completely, it's sort of an odd thing in that it's such a straightforward clue, which basically spells it out through synonyms in the answer, which is fine. But I just, on a Saturday, I usually expect uh, not to have something that direct, which is why I'm slightly skeptical of it, but maybe, I mean, this could, so if this is Brev, uh, this is another, um, is that what that is? I mean, the, the Brev is another, uh, from another sort of system of musical nomenclature. And then go from E to F. And here we have, they've got to hand it to you. Waiters? Oh, halophobia is the fear of salt. I mean, this is probably an, a plural because it's they, so it probably ends with S no matter what, which would make halophobia the fear of salt. Interesting. Definitely not familiar with that one. So let's try waiters here. And a quiet period could be a rest, perhaps. I mean, that would also be a musical term. I mean, doesn't, I mean, a quiet period can be a rest in a non-musical sense, but because we've got this musical clue here, a rest is a literal term for a a symbol and music notation that indicates silence. L.A. Jazz Venue, where Thelonious Monk recorded a live album with the. So here we have three musical clues, or at least arguably musical clues, all crossing one another. Um, but I don't know what this is, I don't think. And a challenge for a language learner. Don't know. Sort of made funny progress through this uh, grid. Almost entirely covered the eastern half of the grid without, with barely even touching the western half. wasn't really intentional. Maybe I should head back up to the top and try and um, look at some of these clues that I've not even seen. Literally one who is sent off. Oh, could it be an apostle? Popular bait fish. Shad, maybe? Is that... Feels as though I'm, I'm compounding unsureness on unsureness. Let's look around. Law school subject could be ethics. Oh, yeah, so that could be shad, actually. Baby to be. Right, so this could be zygote or gamete. Each, each of those would end with E. And then what is this? Stronger with blank tier. Oh, strong with each tier looks plausible. So this could be shad, and then this could be apostle. Oops. Okay, knock on wood. Oh, I hope. I hope. Okay, and in this case, the knock on wood is the thing that's in parentheses. And that's because in this case, the act of knocking on wood is um, 
being equated with the statement, I hope. I always find it slightly difficult to <laughs> to explain these bracket things for some reason. I don't know why, but um, uh, if, if knock on wood, I guess here to explain what I mean, if knock on wood didn't have the square brackets and it just said knock on wood with a capital K, what that would indicate in the clue is that we are looking for a synonym of knock on of the action to knock on wood, which doesn't match, I hope. I hope is an exclamation or an, a thought one might have while performing the action knock on wood. So that, that's why it's in the brackets. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this actually maybe to be, it does look like zygote to me. And Duraflame product, right. So there is something about logs. Maybe it's not campfires. Maybe Duraflame logs are for the home, home fireplaces actually, could be. Okay, first school to win 100 NCAA titles. Well, now with these crosses, I, I got rid of, I must have had, right, I had rotated with like cranks, but I guess in addition to the meanings of cranks I brought up before, which is something you, you rotate or a sort of fraudulent person, it could also mean someone who is grouchy, which could fit here. And then the first school to win 100 NCAA titles, it's probably UCLA, the University of California at Los Angeles, which I do know is a sports powerhouse. So that, and NCAA is the National Collegiate Athletics Association or Administration or something like that. So it's, it's university level sport in the United States. All right. And let's see, questions of surprise. Ah, pop quiz. Yes. I definitely wouldn't have gotten that out of the blue, but it's much easier with these final three letters, which, what could they spell other than quiz? Oh, right. So this pour could be porqué, maybe, for what? And Duraflame product, maybe a Yule log? I don't know. Is that its own sort of project, um, product? This looks, oh. Oh, I see. Standard Disney Fair. Right, so it's probably not G rating, which, as I said, didn't really quite match the clue very well. It could be PG films or PG movie, maybe more likely, the singular. Oh, no, maybe it is films, actually, because that would allow this to be fire log, which I think is correct. And then what is this? Oh, right, the river with the second largest discharge volume. Not sure. Let's keep looking at these shorter crosses. Contents of some wells. You could have an inkwell in which to dip your traditional uh, pen. And pass it on, exclamation point. So when you see an exclamation point like this, what this generally means is that instead, not always, but generally what this means is that the clue isn't a synonym or a definition. It's a description of or something one might say about the thing that is the answer. Uh, so it could be link. You could pass on a link. Um, I don't know. Oh, could this be Orinoco? Is that at all plausible? Yeah, I think maybe it is because a host of, in brief, so someone who is a host might be an MC, a master of ceremonies, but if someone is, if someone is a host of something, then someone is MCing that thing. You're MCing it, which is because the, the, obviously the compound noun MC or the abbreviation of the compound noun has become a verb to MC something. And often in the crossword that, that is alternatively spelled out E-M-C-E-E, -E, but not in this case, because spelling that with the I-N-G would be pretty awkward, I think. So maybe this is Orinoco. And then, oops, a barbecue specialty could be a pork rib and words of acceptance could be so be it. I'm accepting it, so be it and pass it on, oh, lore. Yes, lore is something that's passed on orally. Well, not necessarily orally, it can be written as well. Sorry, I don't know why I said orally specifically, but in any case, it's something that a society passes on through many generations. Potential topic to discuss in science class. Oh, this is a little bit, just a little light wordplay, I suppose. Um, you might discuss energy in science class, but we've got this additional little pun, which is one form of energy is potential energy. Uh, so there we go. And meat. So this could mean the meat of an idea or a plan, the gist of that idea or plan. And request from a host. A host might request that you RSVP, that you reserve your place at uh, their event. And here we have rabbit ears. With this TV, this looks like a TV antenna 
or antennae. Um, I wonder if waiters is correct. I don't know. Let's ignore this for now. Pippi, yeah, oh. Yeah, something is wrong here. Quiet period probably must not be rest. And that makes me, I wonder if waiter, let's just delete this all because Pippi long stocking feature, I'm quite confident is a pigtail. I've, I've never read or seen, I don't think, any Pippi Longstocking book or film or television program or whatever she's in, but certainly seen that character and think she is quite famous for her red pigtails, I want to say. Okay, so rabbit ears, TV antennae, and I think they're going to be the plural because uh, this does say rabbit ears with an S, even though I think possibly you could you could probably call a single TV antenna rabbit ears if the one antenna consists of both sort of rabbit eared loops of wire, which obviously from where it gets its name. And a hybrid Thanksgiving dessert. Could this be pie a la mode? No, that doesn't fit at all. It looks like pie, doesn't it? I don't know. Uh, so here this looks like dix minus un, but it's uh, dix minus un, which in French is 10 minus one, which would be neuf, nine. And that makes a quiet period not a rest at all. So my whole thing about musical clues here could have been utterly incorrect. And it looks like it was because this is not a rest, it's a lull, a quiet period. Sorry about that. As always, not as always, but certainly as is often the case, as someone comment pointed out, often when I make these, <laughs> these big explanations of things, it is a, an omen that I've gotten the clue entirely misinterpreted. Okay, go from E to F. Fall up, fail up. I don't really know what that is. They've got to hand it to you. Anglers? Is something about fishing? I don't really know. Controvert. Could be deny, maybe. And rounded, say. Here we have flower in the nightshade family, and then here we have kind of pool. Don't really know. I'm going to delete this because I'm not seeing any of those crosses, unfortunately. Blank and ran. Could be hit and ran, as in with a car. Duds at an awards ceremony, maybe. Could be a tux. So you, when you read this, you might first interpret duds to be, for instance, a film at an awards ceremony that didn't win any awards. It was a dud. But I think this is using the slang term duds to indicate clothing. And often a tuxedo will be worn at an awards ceremony and even though tux is an abbreviation, it's also sort of a slang term. So we get the indicator there with duds. And maybe because you don't need to wear a tuxedo at an award ceremony, it's just something that might be there. Uh, although this looks weird. So again, maybe all that explanation was for naught. Kind of pool. Hit could also be wrong. Boy, I really would have figured tux was correct. If I remove this, does that help at all? Rounded, say. I don't know. Let's keep looking. Quickly and soon. And oh, that's good. And manor house attendant. I don't know. Butler? Or I'm not really sure. Hybrid Thanksgiving dessert. What is this? I really I don't know. Hybrid Thanksgiving. What is a hybrid? Dessert. Don't know, I'm sorry. I'm kind of hitting a wall here, aren't I? Go from E to F. To go from E to F. Fall up, I just don't... To go from... Oh! Maybe to go from empty to full, to fuel up, as in an automobile. And they've got to hand it to you. Oh, this is probably the LA Jazz venue. It's probably club, something club, right? Pie, cakes, hybrid Thanksgiving dessert? I don't know. Um, they've got to hand it to you. I keep thinking antlers, which makes no sense at all. Let's see. Oh, I spelled TV antenna wrong. What on earth? I'm sorry. Ah, I just completely forgot about the T and that does make it singular. So here's a case where I made a big whole explanation about how this could be singular. 
And actually, it was correct, and I just didn't even notice. So let's see. They've got to hand it to you. Uh, this could be dealers, now that I finally don't have this misleading N there. Uh, they could deal your hand in, in a card game, such as poker. And then hybrid Thanksgiving dessert. Maybe it is pie cakes. I've never heard of that, if so. Challenge for a language learner. Oh, an idiom. An idiom can be challenging for a language learner because it uses words in non-standard ways. Okay, a manor house attendant. Could be a footman, perhaps? And then... Oh, pie. Ah, that's driving me crazy. A baby could be a tot. Oh, that's good. Could end in one, nice one or something. That would make that wrong, but... Quickly and soon. Oh, might have guessed hastily, if not for that N. Rounded, say... I don't know, Tux could be wrong. This F might be helpful. Kind of pool. Boy, I'm really, really struggling here, aren't I? Doesn't bode well for my next um, <laughs> boss words competition puzzle that I'm going to be solving immediately after this. Um, I could get rid of Footman because is there something else this could be? Don't really know if that's man either. Flower in the nightshade family. I haven't really thought about this much because I don't, I'm not much of a horticulturalist. Flower in the nightshade family. Kind of pool. What kind of pools are there? Gene pool, dating pool. Dating pool could be right. Is that manor house attendant? Groundsman. Oh, that's good. Oh, right. This could be a nice one. Baby. Could be we if it's being used as an adjective. You might say a baby carrot, a we carrot. That's a silly example, but um Quickly and soon could be in a wink. I would actually make we plausible there. Oh, so maybe this is pie cakes. I have no idea what pie cakes are. Manor house attendant. attendant. It ends with an S. That's sort of odd, though. I don't know. Rounded say, oh, inexact. If you round a number, it is no longer exact. Okay, that, that makes sense. So controvert could be deny, which I'd said earlier. And then... Ate and ran? What is that? If you sort of skip out on a bill at a restaurant or, or just ate quickly and left? I don't really, I'm not, I don't think I'm familiar with that as a phrase. Oh, petunia. Oh, a gateman. Pie caken? <laughs> what? Uh, something feels wrong here, but I, I don't really know what it is. Um... Pie caken. Is this some sort of, could this be a ger something that comes from German or Dutch or something? I mean, there are a lot of American you know, desserts and certain regional dishes that have their root in either Scandinavian or German things that were brought over by immigrants from those countries and retain names that are sort of evocative of those languages. I mean, could this possibly be pie caken? I mean, I, that could be the completely wrong or irrelevant explanation. I, I just don't know. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> okay, go figure. I have not a clue what that is. Lucky me that I got it right. So, I mean, I, I was just because of Gateman here. Okay, so that was, I found that to be a pretty tricky puzzle. I definitely found that to be much more difficult than yesterday's Friday puzzle, which I found to be I would say on the easier side for a Friday. This was uh, tricky for me, but it's a Saturday. It's meant to be. Let me know how you fared with this puzzle. Boy, really, that pie cake, and that was absolutely confounding. And I struggled over here a bunch with some clues that I just, uh, after this brev, the crosses here, 
I, I made a bit of a mess of, uh, and that was just put me on the wrong track for a while. And then, boy, that misspelling of TV antenna, what a disaster that was. I really, that's frustrating because that was, that was just a silly error. I just didn't type the T for some reason. And so, um, don't know what I did there. Uh, and then let's see what else was, I, I think, I think the, this, this general region over here was really the thing that gave me trouble. I think the rest of the puzzle, I don't think I encountered a lot of overt sort of brick wall difficulty. It was just sort of a generally, um, you know, a bit of a challenge throughout, I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, I enjoyed this puzzle. It definitely gave me some, gave me quite a bit of challenge. I will, I will say that it really did. Oh yes. And then a course or a crochet. Curious to look this up. I suspect this is the, that sort of Vitruvian man style illustration of, you know, muscles and, and skeletal, uh, skeletal structure, that sort of thing. And then cartage, a sort of ended up taking a bit of a guess towards the end. So I guess there were some, there were some tricky things over here as well, but for whatever reason, the crosses treated me a bit better on this side. And some, some general um, slang that was a bit, a bit goofy, like dare, uh, what's the diff, less goofy, um, but another, another bit of slangy speech. Anyway, let me know how you fared with this Saturday puzzle by Sam Azursky. Uh, and I am going to get on with solving what I suspect will be a much more difficult puzzle, which is the next Boss Words Fall themeless competition puzzle, which you'll be able to watch if you're a um, Patreon subscriber whenever I get that done and posted. So look out for that if you're on the Patreon. Speaking of that, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve if you would like to help support this channel. You can also support the channel simply by subscribing on YouTube or telling a friend if you think that you know someone who might like this, or if you are part of an online community that you think might be receptive to this sort of thing. And uh, also, going back to the Patreon campaign, I would like to particularly thank a couple of supporters who have been quite generous. I am today thanking Stephen Nori, Shantanu Bhatia, and Hood Monster. Thank you to all three of you, Stephen, Shantanu, and Hood Monster. Thank you for your generous support. I really do appreciate it. Helps this series continue going forward. And if you would like to join their ranks, there's a link to that in the description field underneath each video. So that I think that's that for today's Saturday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you will come back tomorrow for the big old Sunday grid, the big largest, the largest grid of the week. Um, something about a midweek or maybe a little more than midweek difficulty, but just a big grid, often a, a bit of a leisurely languid solve. So join me for that tomorrow. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care.